So in this video, I'll talk about Next.js 14 and what has changed, if anything, from Next.js 13. This was released last week in the Next.js conf in San Francisco. I happened to be there in person. I was invited from Vercel as an active uh, member in the community for Next.js. So I had the pleasure to be there in person. But as far as Next.js 14 goes, even though it was a major release, from 13 and you would think a major release would have breaking changes otherwise it won't be a major release uh, it does not have any breaking changes and it does not actually have any new apis the only thing that has changed as far as your concern for your production code is that now server actions are stable so if you have been dabbling around with nextjs 13 you know server actions which is a way to mutate data um, in your server. They have been experimental so far. So you had to pass that flag in your config to use server actions, but now uh, they're fully stable. Nothing new for you to learn if you've already learned Next.js 13. And, and if you haven't, I do have a course on Next.js 13. I'm going to mention the course at the end. I have a special pricing going on celebrating the 10k subscribers on YouTube, but let's just go back to Next.js 14. So the one thing that has changed as far as the APIs goes for Next.js is that now server actions are stable. Now they're doing some internal work on the Turbo Pack, which is the compiler they're using for Next.js. It's a Rust-based uh, compiler. They're making it faster for your local server setup, for your hot module reloads and also uh, fast refreshes for your uh, code updates. Uh, they're introducing a new feature which is called partial pre-rendering. This is still in preview so it, it is not even available in Next.js 14 yet um, but it will be something that uh, we can benefit from later on and basically what it is is it is going to now uh, allow you to statically render bits and pieces of your page at build time rather than deciding about a dynamic versus static page at page level. For example, if you have a suspense boundary that's holding up or suspending for a dynamic content to be fetched, you typically have a fallback and that fallback is a static. That fallback or the static fallback can be rendered at build time and an instant shell can be shown to the user. So at the end of the day, your pages would render faster or would assume to be, would, would uh, look, seem to be rendered faster because the users are going to get that instant HTML or instant fallback or instant static parts of your page first before that dynamic content is actually fetched and rendered on your page. So it's a faster perceived uh, page load but also allows you to offload a lot of those rendering to uh, be done at build time so that you're just sending a static HTML. So that's something that uh, is coming in future. I'm going to cover more videos about what exactly that feature is and how it's going to help you. But for now, um, there hasn't been any, any change basically to Next.js 14, which is good because Next.js 13 and the app router was new in and of it itself. Now, thinking that you now have to then start learning more on top of it or change what you have learned, um, it, would, it was overwhelming and I got this feedback from my own community as well. But there's nothing new to learn. There's, there's nothing that has changed. It's basically stabilizing the new way that was introduced in Next.js 13 and that's mainly the app router built on top of server components uh, and suspense. So that's as far as Next.js 14 goes but on a personal note the conference was a blast. I It was actually my first in-person Next.js event so I got to meet a lot of people that I knew from the community but I have never met in person. I saw content creators from YouTube and people from Vercel, so it was really nice. And even nicer was that on the keynote, Guillermo actually featured some people from the community, and I was one of them. And it was very rewarding um, right in the beginning of the event, being mentioned or acknowledged by Guillermo, the CEO of 
and founder of Vercel and actually creator of Next.js to be acknowledged for the amount of work all these people actually put in uh, Next.js and bringing up the community, um, whether it's content creation on YouTube courses or being engaged in you know, different platforms, answering questions and whatnot. So it was great. Uh, to also be acknowledged from Vercel as an active member of the community. At the end, I want to thank each and every one of you who has supported me in this journey by engaging with my content, giving me feedback, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. It really does make a difference for creators like me who put a lot of effort into creating this content for free and contributing to the community of Next.js in my case or any other framework for that matter. So do support your creators and thank you very much for your support to give back to my community. I have put a humongous discount on my Next.js course. So go check it out if you're interested in taking it. Uh, and also, uh, the API hasn't changed. That was introduced back in May, I think, for Next.js 13, but it applies to Next.js 14. The only update that I'm going to have on the course is an extra video actually mentioning that Next that server actions are now stable. So there is no uh, reason for passing an experimental flag anymore. It's just stable. You can just go ahead and comfortably use that. There is uh, going to be more updates and more videos uh, every time that something comes up. So I'm going to update that course. It's not a stale course. I've, I've already had it, a couple of videos added to it. But as we go on, not only you're going to, you're going to get some updates about what's happening or best practices of actually applying these different APIs introduced in the app router. But I'm also planning to add projects. Uh, at the end of the course, there is a chapter for projects. Right now, there's only one project in it, but I'm planning to add more projects now that all the APIs are done and we know nothing else is going to be introduced for a little while. I'll work on the projects to add more projects to it so you can really benefit from the content and also uh, see projects there, see be best practices and have access to those projects or use them as a practice to hone your skill in the app router in Next.js to become uh, really expert at Next.js. So check that out if you're interested. If you're not, I thank you still uh, for supporting my work here on the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.